The vacuum cleaner is out there. If you want to get pictures with it after, we'll be out there. Yeah. Well, I'll give you seven minutes alone with it. It cost you. That costs extra. Do you have the blue underwear? He's wearing them right now. No, I didn't put them on because I know I'm not going to get them anyway. Are you commando right now? Huh? No. no, no, no. <laughs> You have underwear on. Huh? You have underwear on. Oh, there they are. There they are. Wait, okay, let me get a smell. Yeah. Smell my underwear. Hey, Terry, smell my underwear. Oh, those actually smell 24 years old. They smell like 41 conventions. <laughs> so here I'll let you know. I always wonder how bad this stinks because once I get it, you can't wash it. It's got stickers and stuff. I'm like, what do I do with this thing? So, Get it for <laughs> First of all, the casting in here um, in this film is really great. It seemed like everyone got along, everyone was on point. How was that working with everyone? Because it just seems like a perfect match. Uh, it was really me. He's <laughs> <laughs> um, been doing like in high school, yeah. like getting along with everybody. So I was like, guys. <laughs> got there early and you know the whole process when you work with the wings is very collaborative and they you know we had some rehearsals which is not always the case on feature films you and don't always reads. have rehearsals and table reads and uh, they gave us all questionnaires to fill out about our characters you and, and uh, then they collected them and they went back to the drawing board you know they were constantly punching up stuff there was never yet yeah, this was any of the Wayne movies they do, they, especially this one, there might have been a team of like six writers, uh, and Marlon and, and um, Sean were part of that, that at the end of wrapping during the day, they would, whatever they're shooting the next day, they would stay up and very late and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite, and then obviously there was improv on the set as well, because that was the thing with Keenan was, he, Keenan's actually a very hands-off director, because he would say, well, I hired you, to play the role. So I want, his whole thing is to make everybody, he wants to get the most out of you, because he's paying you. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I'm not paying you to just write for you my lines, I, I want to steal your shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but, and, and that's also with the wardrobe and the prop people, he, he expects them to bring a lot of creativity to it. He wants to mine as much as he could. Yeah, and they gave us all, you know, I know what you did last summer, Scream, yeah. and like every movie that's parodied they gave us VHS copies, and they were like, "There's a V, you know, VCR in your hotel. Like, please, what did I say? VHS. VHS. Yeah. 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 And they uh, and they had us watch them, and they were like, if you see anything that you know you think is funny to spoof or whatever, like, let us know. We'll like, you know, we'll try to fit it in. So there's a lot of stuff in there that came yeah. from all of us that were, you know, watching these movies over and over and over again. And we shot in Vancouver, yep. and. Um, it was like $300 a day for me. Canadian. In, in Canada, that was like having five hundred dollars. So you imagine there's six or seven of us that with five hundred dollars each, it was like, okay, we got three thousand dollars. What do you want to do tonight? You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, so you had you asked how we got along and why we seemed to get along so well, because we had so much money to go.
shop at thrift stores for my characters, and I over like a year and a half I collected everything Hulk had on. Hulk hat, Hulk fanny pack, shorts, socks, satin jacket, and I, I wanted a piece of chip with me for the film, so that's why I said, oh, can I have a backpack? And really, in the movie, that's what's in there, so all this Hulk money. But stuff. didn't you also show up to your meeting with Keenan? I did, you know, Keenan Hulk and Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I showed up with you were Chip. Maybe he did think that was a special idea. He, he got freaked out. <laughs> and I did a, and Chip, with that small my finger, and Chip was like, hey, hey, give me five. Give me five. That's it. He'd walk around with this friend, my friend Bruce, always like, give me five. And I was like, give me five. But I would always stick it in people's face, like, give me five. Give me five. And he's like, yeah. And then when, when people slap it away, I go, yeah. Give me five. And, and that was in the day of beepers. Pagers. Okay. So I left, and I was like, man, I nailed it. I nailed it. And the pager went off, because this was in LA, and it was a New York number, and I was like, oh, it's dimension. I practice, and I nailed it. And, but I had to get like $1.50 in quarters, and pull over on Sunset Boulevard, and I fed it, and I caught, you know, and they were like, what the fuck did you do? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm winning this, this dude. And it's, well, it was doing me, but it's Chip. I was like, I nailed it, man. He was, like, everybody was freaked out. It was great. You know, no, they're freaked out. Like, they think we sent some weirdo in there. You gotta go back as yourself. So then I went back in as myself, and he was clapping. It was like, that was amazing. And um, and he goes, you got to be a favor when you do the table read. Show up right there again. And then, like, the girls were getting freaked out. Like, the, 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 and then they all went, oh my gosh, you got to do us a favor. On the first day of the set, show up again. And I was like, so. <laughs> I was like, I'm not showing up as him, so. so was that? Well, but not really. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, the fairy ride. I forgot about the fairy ride. Uh, so, we, so the first stuff we shot for the movie was on this island called Victoria. Victoria island. The high school song. Off of Vancouver, and you gotta take a ferry. So, the whole cast, all the crew, everybody gets on the ferry to go. And Dave is in character as Doofy. Yep. And he finds like a light vest and he's got the light vest on. <laughs> Didn't I have a hot sauce? But, but hold on, but before that, he's so in character that the ferry captain gets word of this and thinks that he's like a special needs person. Yeah, it backfired on him. And they it's like an hour and a half ferry ride. They invite him into the captain's seat and they're, they're like, like hey, do you want to meet the captain? <laughs> they're like, okay. And, <laughs> and now they can't break character. They can't break character. <laughs> For an hour and a half, because that then they'd be pissed. I'd be like, look, guys, I'm not really a big part of the time. And then he goes to them, and he's like, this is good. They're like, do you want to steal the ship? I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's really better. It's really better. And then he goes to the bar, and he, they're like, do you want a drink, sir? And he takes the hot sauce for like the Bloody Marys or whatever, yeah. and he drinks the whole bottle of hot sauce in one shot, like Tabasco, the whole, whole shot. Yeah. And uh, that part he's like, Beat red and like seriously in trouble, but he can't break character. Yeah. And uh, we all were just dying laughing. <laughs> like, like, who is this guy? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> all because there was a light preserver coming into the streets. <laughs> yeah.
Got shit like a fish. <laughs> you are the rap, are you? That's you rapping, okay? That's me rapping, yeah. Woo! Woo! I was looking up trying to figure out how any information of your character and how you got the part, because it is, it's rumored for Jared Leto was asked to play that, but he turned it down to do, I think, Rugby and Four Dreams. Yeah. And then I was trying to look for how did you audition to get the part. So, so I, I, Logan, you did faculty before, yeah, and also yeah. the best I, I had worked for Mirror Max and Dimension a lot already. Right. And I was on the set of a movie called Texas Rangers. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that. Um, we were shooting that for six months at the time. It was the most money Miramax had spent on a movie besides Shakespeare in Love, I think, or something. I'm oh, no, sorry, The English Patient. And it was like $60 million over budget or whatever. And uh, they cornered me, like Bob Weinstein and a couple other execs. We know what, how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a movie called Outside Problems that was coming out. And, oh, you were coming out. <laughs> I was coming in. <laughs> hey, 2 a.m. Weinstein calls. <laughs> yeah, 2 a.m. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things, just to let you know, because I did it out later on, because I would go to these hotel meetings and Weinstein's in these hotel rooms across from CAA. They'd say, like, go out there and let them go. And then I realized after all the stuff came out, I go, he was just trying to normalize the hotel meetings by having us go to, it just made the agencies go, oh no, he meets with everyone. He met with Dave Sheridan, not fucking Dave Sheridan. No, I swear to speak for yourself, Dave. Uh, no, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, so yeah. Bob Weinstein, who, like, for the record, has yeah. been, not been convicted of anything. It's um, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a that. Right. Okay. So they quartered me on set on Texas Rangers and they were like, I have this movie Outside Province coming out that was also Dimension or Miramax or Miramax, Farrelly Brothers. And uh, they were like, hey, we're making this movie and, and nobody wants to be in it. Like, no one will do it. That's the like, itself. Everybody it's in itself. town. <laughs> like, everybody in town has turned it down. And like, we, we think you'd be great. Like, will you do it? And I was like, what is it? You know, like they didn't even tell me. And they were like, oh, it's this Wayans Brothers thing. And I was like, okay, stop right now. I was like, I'll do it. I'll sign up right now. Like the Wayans Brothers and the Wayans family and the Living Color yeah. and I'm Gonna Get You Sucker was my favorite yeah. shit growing up. Yeah. 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 And they're, uh, you know, they're from Chelsea in New York City, which is where I went to junior high school. I'm from right below there in Manhattan. And uh, so I was like, say less, like I'm, I'm there. And they were like, cool, we're, we're gonna fly you on your day off to meet Keenan and all this stuff. And so I went in like just like fanboying out on Keenan. And he was like, he was like, I'm just like happy somebody wants to be play this part. You know? So, <laughs> so that's how I ended up in the movie. So yes, it's true. But it was more than just Jared Leno at that time. It was like, you name any other actor of that age, at that time they had all turned it down. <laughs> you know, just the guy. <laughs> well, I mean, after it's been out forever, and, and I just see only you play it. I cannot imagine, like, yeah. even trying to put that in there. I, I can't. Woo! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, that's, I, I want to talk about your character a little bit because he just feels nonchalant, just let Cindy and he's going to speak down. Like, he's just right <laughs> there. Was that. Part of the improvisation, or just he's just all drunk. It's that's what he is. No, yes, yeah, <laughs> I have no no manners. I'm not a gentleman. No, uh, it came from watching. I know what you did last summer, and honestly, um, you know the sleazy thing and like wanting to get laid was all like me and us parodying Skeet in Scream. But then the thing about Freddie Prince Jr. and I know what you did last summer is if you watch it is he's really nonchalant and he's like almost not there. He's like, you know, he's like, it's just so bizarre. And things are kind of happening in that movie and he's sort of like not reacting to that or something. So I kind of picked up on that. I was like, that's funny. And they thought it was funny. So they were like, you know, every time she's getting beat by anybody, like <laughs> just try to like not react to it at all, you know? 
Well, it's something I like haven't seen in that film. I mean, even after all this time, it's still funny as hell. Um, <laughs> just uh, one uh, John reading Bobby, like Bobby the Floor Doll coming out of the. Uh, <laughs> Out of the, uh, the trailer and the blow up doll, and you yeah. see Joe Bob, whatever, Chong, or Bean, or whatever. Like, was, that, was that made up, or are those people you know? <laughs> 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 that no, that's a good question. No, we were messing around, and I, I just did that, you know, because like the other thing is like, Skeet and Scream is very sort of for lack of a better word, white trash, right? <laughs> and, uh, and so we just kind of ran with that, and I, you know, I was like, oh, it'd be funny if there's like tons of hick names, redneck names, like in the trailer. So they were like, just make some shit up. And so I did. I was like, see you later, Bobby Jim, Billy Jim, Jimmy Bob, you know, and then Chow Ding, which is like, so So random. So random. So that's, that's, that's one word for it. Mary just says your sister. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how that happened. And I might have been, I mean, they gave us a lot of leeway with our character design, if you will. Like, I think they sent me out to like all the vintage stores in town to get like, you know, the titty shirt and like all that kind of, I'm wearing a hat that says like 30 and 30 because like everybody in these movies who plays high schoolers are actually like 30 years old. <laughs> and like whatever. And so I think I was like, oh, well he's such a horn dog, let's put a blow up dog on the, on the thing, you know, when you open the train. That was the one thing I didn't think it was just was the bell. Except for the big yellow swallows, he had to go to the mic 
and, and said a lot of stuff. And there was a two camera shoot, he was shooting Sherry. And he, when he got the reaction he wanted out of her, he was like, we got him on that one. You know, like, cause I kept saying a bunch of things and stuff. And they were borrowing some of yelling things for me to say. But Gail Swallows wasn't the only thing. <laughs> 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 what are the, are the other things when you, when, John, when you were up there when Greg was crying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the things that were saying, were they saying that to you guys? Or were you guys reacting? Oh, yelling up. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And, uh, and I was like, no, I want to do it. Like, I want to do everything for my character. And they were like, okay, please, like, if you do it, like, we don't want to, like, just don't bend over when we're shooting your ass. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no problem. We, like, rehearsed it. And then, like, actually, things were so heavy that, like, you had to bend down and pick them back up in between takes and then drop them. And, uh, and I remember I, like, bent over to get him. And he was like, no, 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 please, no, don't do it. But they cut that out. Thankfully, and I just didn't make it on YouTube. Was after you and Cindy um, fooling around, and she was laying in the bed trying to be all nice to you. Is that out there? Well, yes, it was on YouTube. Really? I've never seen it. Oh, you gotta leave. Yeah, yeah. So after we had sex, there was a scene where the camera's on Cindy, and she's covered in, you know. Semen. And uh and and she's like, Oh Bobby, it's just so wonderful that we can share this thing together. And it like pans over to me and I'm on the phone and I'm like, Yeah, I hit it, kid, I finally did it, yeah, well, I'm like, what? Oh, okay, babe, go make me a sandwich, right? <laughs> so we were filming that and we did like a couple takes and then we were getting ready to shoot another take, and I looked over, and poor Anna was like super humiliated, as you can imagine. It's humiliating, right? She was covered in shit, you know. It's her first film, and it's her first movie. Everybody, she had never been in a movie before. Um, kudos to her; she's amazing. For that. Yeah. The comedy time is impeccable, but um, but yeah. So she was like you know, not feeling that scene. And so I think Keenan was like, listen, we're, we're just not going to put that in the movie. Right? Now, I didn't know that that's out there. Cause, uh, no, yeah, because he reason. turned to me and said, we'll wait 10 years and put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's how dance he is. He's, he already knows about YouTube before it comes out. That's the kind of genius we're talking about. Uh, that's it. Yeah, it was, I was looking dead at it. And the part, that you said, he was like, oh, you owe me $20. Like, somebody was supposed to give you some money. <laughs> and I was like, wow, but you're right. When um, I did read that Anna was having a hard time on those kind of scenes, and it was said that Keenan took a walk with her. That's correct. Yeah, it mm -hmm. said, you know, if you if people laugh, we'll keep stuff, certain things in there. If they, you know, groan or don't laugh, we'll take it out. You know, I won't do you like that. She said, oh, thank you. So some of the things that we do see, yeah, yeah if people were laughing. And I guess the one that's on YouTube, maybe they wasn't laughing. I know, they're like, yeah, Keenan does not like groans. He, like, he doesn't, he likes laughs. Yeah. He like that girl stuff. They cut, like, when I kill, um, who's the girl from the Metro? Elizabeth. Shannon Elizabeth. The part, and you look at her, Sure, you'll see it's covered in blood. When she's like, oh, blah, 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 yeah, nah. Before that, I'm like, gutting her open. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it gets very like, visceral and like, sort of like torture sexy kind of stuff. And I'm pulling her, her intestines out, and then it's kind of a thing, there's a Jaws kind of joke where it's like, and I pull food out, and put license <laughs> game, and all these condoms and stuff like that. Um, I think that one got one of those. Oh, and then he said, "Let's go back." Yeah. <laughs> um, so, did you see the one where they was doing the football and he was like, "69, yeah. 69." Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And Craig was like, "Are you gonna do it?" <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. He's like, yeah, and he like was all freaked up. Yeah. I thought there was a scene where there was like a, a tackle, and then it's already over. He goes and jumps on the whole thing. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> the iconic vacuum cleaner, uh, was that improv? Was that an idea, like, Dave, that you thought of? Or it was, uh, they said, you know what, here's some stuff, just go do it. 
that you know, the fact that it was already written. You know, oh, that was all. That was, you know. But the thing at the end, which because you know, there was a line. She had that line before, like your mom said, you stop thinking you think in the bathroom. <laughs> and then they said, you try to thing you bring it back to the bathroom. But I think they don't disturb you on being rude. That probably would have had me. Don't disturb you on being a dude. You know, I'm pretty bad. And then that, they got such a kick out of that, they built a whole set of duties room that's at the end of the credits. That's not the script. They didn't tell me I was shooting it. They called me and I go, they go, we, we need you at 10. And they go, oh, I thought I was just shooting. Uh, go space. No, no, no. We need you to do feet and uh, no, just, just the underwear. It's only me. And I was like, huh? I was like, and then we, he and said, look, it's your first film, but you know, I know you're the kind of guy that's committed, that's gonna do whatever it takes, and that is what's gonna make you successful. You know, and, yeah, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. And he goes, good. And then we round the corner, and it's Doofy's room. He goes, I want you to stick your dick in my back. <laughs> It's like a porn set. It's not even a real film. Look at that thing. It's like a wall. Like, like they painted in one minute. And then there's that shower scene with the girls, right? Which is called a closed set. So a closed set is like nobody on there but the director and the cameraman and maybe the sound guy. And 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 I didn't get that. Like, I'm going to get up on that bed and say, right, yeah, that's what I want you to do. And I, what, what do I say? You'll find it. You'll find it. And then I go, okay. And as soon as I said I'm going to do it, you hear like the radio is going off. It's like, dude, he's going to stick dick in the back. And anybody, they look like makeup, like, like the delivery guys, delivering furniture, like whatever. But they didn't work there. And you know, we walked down the street, and, and it was like they were shooting like a Stallone movie. And you remember what that Stallone movie was? It was like, you know, it was like a prison escape in Sand Asylum in the snow. He had to, he was supposed to shave his head, but he refused to shave his head because. Yeah. So are you telling me the entire crew from that came over? Yeah, they go, hey, 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 anybody want to go? Yeah, yeah, we're going to wrap right now. We're going to come over. It was just like all oh, these workers and stuff. And I'm like, huh. Oh. Uh, and that's why I was like, I did the whole thing of a breakup. Like, yeah, yeah, I know what I did. Yeah, yeah, okay. And everyone, like, he said, I told you to find it. <laughs> the, the finale scene between Ray and John, when like Miss Avenue, and he's like, wait, 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 you know, and to the point where he's like, I'm just gonna cut your throat and, and stuff like that. So, but I, you were saying something during the commentary. I don't think I heard, or I don't think many people heard you. You said he was stabbing you hard, or oh no, so yeah, hard. yeah. When when he's trying to stab me, and I keep being like, wait, 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 wait. He slaps me, and he slapped me so fucking hard, like. <laughs> It was great. I love it. Like I welcome that shit. He, he really clocked me. It's crazy hard. And so I remember that. But uh, they didn't keep it, or was it just like you snapped? No, that's it. I think that's it. But it, like it doesn't look quite as hard. I never as really it was hard. Yeah, you know like the big stuff they had sound and he like nearly broke my jaw with that one. He was like, ah, you know. <laughs> um, and it's great. It plays. But uh, so you guys naturally fail like. No, 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 no. We, that was an impromptu thing. We were like, maybe we should die like this, you know? And then he was like, yeah, I don't want to fall on you like this. And uh, everybody was dying laughing. We were like, we have to, this has to be how we die. So. <laughs> yep. And by the way, Gay Ray is a real guy. That they, yeah. <laughs> so they grew up in Chelsea, which, if nobody knows, Chelsea was a very predominantly gay neighborhood. And uh, it's right near the Hudson River Piers, and that's where, like, a lot of cruising and male prostitution used to be. And uh, they had a friend that they grew up with. Uh, it's the Meatpacking District, and that's not a joke. That's for real. It's called the Meatpacking District. And, uh, and uh, Gay Ray was like another dude in the projects that they were friends with. And, you know, he used to go down there and like let dudes do things for money. And they'd be like, get it, Ray, like, what, what the fuck, man? Like, I'm not gay. He sucked my dick. <laughs> so that's, that's true. That's where that came from. I think uh, the iconic scene, there's a lot of iconic scenes in this movie, but the one where it finally reveals. So it's kind of like you play three different, almost three different characters. Yep. And even to this 
understand if some people don't get the record. I came across people, what, what is, where is that from? My well, usual suspects rip this off, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I said the commentary. <laughs> but it's such a, it was such a big relief. I remember watching that in the theater. And when you, you see him walking, and then he was normal, and then we saw you, it was like, oh, he's nice looking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but it was like, I see that a lot of people going like, you're that guy too? Like, uh, and what? They're besides you like pretty going like, well, who's the guy walking at the end? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, but as soon as I saw that, it just, because I've seen the, uh, the usual suspects, and that's a great number that I've never seen. But, but yeah, when I saw that, I was like, people were cheering, clapping, jumping up, screaming, and hollering. It was so cool the way it was done. Um, and I really did have one day because you see the lights on the car, they were like, it always is like that because it was the, the, there was rehearsals because it was a steady cam. And, oh, park, pull the car up. Sherry had to pull the car up in the sandbag or whatever. You know, it, it, it was a lot that went into it. And it was just like, okay, got one kick. And for like that for like an hour and a half, like, getting set up. I was like, oh, God, one day, you know. So the worst part was, I said, it was my own Zippo lighter that I, I could open it up and, just, and I was practicing so much doing it. That I ran out of the fluid. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I'm flipping it, practicing, and I was like, flipping it, oh man, I got this. I thought it would be perfect. And I'm like, damn it. And they're like, no, no, it was great. Because I, I was like, oh, I did this. Oh, now I got this. Good. Moving on. I was like, oh. But I forgot, I, I ran out of the fluid while I was practicing. Is there anything in this film that people have not mentioned or seen or noticed that is? Very important, or that you guys love that isn't talked about. Because I was reading a lot of information. There was so much stuff, great stuff behind the scenes. But is there something that you, every interview or anything, has not? Because you even told me, oh, the movie. And I've seen this movie forever, and I've never paid attention to the movie written on that wall. On yeah. the wall. Yeah. So, is there anything that we should know? Are we covered? Are we covered? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's like inside stuff, but yeah, I mean, we revealed that Gay Ray is a real guy. Very <laughs> <laughs> important information. I am wearing a dildo in the other He is wearing a dildo in the other And I had to go to the, the, the war. Is it you? Nah. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm going to shoot my name in his red butt. Uh, I had to go shop for it, though. With a wardrobe man who is a very effeminate gay black man. And they took me out, and he was local, so he took me to his gay sex shop, where the guy knew him, and, and did say, this is an actor, we're getting the thing, goes, he needs a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, ah, not bad, but, but, but uh, I, I didn't do that, I go, well, I'm gonna, let's just go for it, yeah, that was good, enough. you know what I mean, like, he, he neglected to tell the guy it was a movie prop, like, we need one for him, you know? Uh, and he did like, did you know that the cowboy chat stuff? No. That this guy, what was his name? I don't remember his name, but uh, he also like had all this like uh, cowboy ass. The all chats are assless, first of all. But uh, <laughs> he put me in chat with no underwear and like cowboy hat, no shirt. Keenan wants to see this outfit on you. And he took photos. <laughs> And then I talk to Keenan, I go, yeah, about that cowboy outfit. Like, what scene am I wearing that? I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if that really is good. He goes, what cowboy outfit are you talking about? He, as a trailer, he had to put the stuff on. He goes, what? Like, <laughs> and uh, I said, dude, it's so funny. I don't worry about it. And everybody, they all thought it was hilarious anyway. You know, oh, you got, you got taken by him. He did, he did that to you too? Yeah. I, I, to me first, just like, no, you wore hand me downs <laughs> and really hand me downs. <laughs> and the other one is when they smell every which way the hand went, you wore. Did you guys think about feminists and, and doing your scenes and your characters? Did you believe that it would become such a cult classic? It is one of the greatest core comedy parodies ever. Even the ones that follow is not. No, nah, I have no clue what you I mean, it definitely doesn't beat Airplane or, 
maybe got my opinion, but um, but it's out there. I, I, the one thing that makes this work is that it, it really doesn't pinball panels, uh, referential pop culture. That moment, you know, you saw the Spice Girls thing mentioned in there, or Prince, or Prince of Times. But um, this one stuck to screen, and George did last summer. And, 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 and so if you just follow it, right? Yeah. Huh? I think I know what you did last summer too, as Probably. well, right? Like, because yeah. what's his name? Sherry's camera guy is like, has the badge making an accent. Right. Isn't that, I know what you did last summer too? I know that's for you. Which one is Jack Black in? That's like the guy with the bad. I still know what you did last summer. I still, right? Yeah. yeah, so. Okay, got it. Yeah, anyway. They tried to stick mostly to those franchises, but yeah. like, they also have spoof election in it, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. Like Girl Heather like or whatever. Yeah. Election. And then, um, Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Yeah. Yeah. But at least it is movies, it's not jumping at something. Uh, I mean, I knew it was going to be special because I was such a fan of the way it's family. <clears throat> but, like, we didn't know it was going to be the highest grossing. I didn't know I'd be wearing this suit. We didn't know. That's what you were asking. Did you know that you can say it's not my finger and your eyes in the back of the theater? 24 and a half years later. Did you know you're never escaping this guy? Did you know that? Did you know your kids can never tell up their friends what you really do for a living? Did you know that? Do you know how bad you're going to be? Any questions to ask?